on the late night tap in uh, before we get started don't forget to go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com if you are near or in the LA area we want to have you come on down to the museum next Saturday not this coming Saturday but the next Saturday we have a great event we're having there and you know the Hidden History Museum's events are phenomenal we're gonna have a ball a lot of good networking complimentary dinner um, great comics so it's gonna be a nice vibe and I'm gonna be there chopping up game with you so just rock with me and vibe out with me Saturday September 14th hiddenhistorymuseum.com that's where you can go for more information and get your tickets to join me ladies and gentlemen a lot of stuff we're gonna hit on tonight we're gonna to get calls in early we're gonna do that and don't forget it's very, it's very hot out here in LA I'm in LA man it's real hot out here it was like a hundred like shit what was it today somebody said it was 110 I'm not sure it was very very hot it's hot now so you're gonna need that root work deodorant if you're out here on the West Coast because this heat makes you extra super duper musty so you're gonna need your root work deodorant you're gonna have to get that at rootworkstyle.com rootworkstyle.com ladies and gentlemen um, a few things first of all R.I.P. to rapper Rich Homie Kwan R.I.P. to rapper Rich Homie Kwan Rich Homie Kwan passed away today unexpectedly the brother passed away shocked a lot of people rich homie kwan was a rapper out of atlanta had a few hits man and i've never met the brother but i heard it was a cool brother um, a lot of hits had a lot of atlanta bangers the guy was very respected in the industry and um he was like 33 or 34. very young dude now people are speculating about what was the cause of death? Um, I think his girlfriend said she found him unresponsive and he was foaming at the mouth. All right. That sounds like a drug overdose. I'm not saying it is or it's not. Some people are speculating that it could be a drug overdose, but foaming at the mouth, that sounds like a drug overdose. Uh, listen, because we do have a lot of these young cats out here over overdosing because right now in the culture the dominant society pushes this thing where it's cool to be a a little druggy and i know down in atlanta um not just in atlanta but in, in other places they got these new drugs that they're using dudes are huffing these um like little t like um what are these things they're they're huffing on these um canisters i can't i forgot what it was but they always got some kind of new thing to get high with that's being pushed they always got some new designer drug or some new fad drug that they're pushing on us and we, we look family stay away from all that garbage dude let me talk to my youngins out there to the nephews and nieces man that ain't the lick. We don't need no more drug addicts out here. We don't need nobody smoking, huffing, puffing, drinking scissor, none of that stuff. Really leave all that garbage alone, man. Some of the stuff out here, it ain't, that ain't it. It ain't cool. It ain't fly. They're lacing too much of this stuff with weird chemicals. And then they'll get rappers and record companies will incentivize these dudes to rap about Huffing, puffing, sipping, slurping, drinking lean, huffing this, huffing that. That stuff is promoted by the dominant society to make y'all think that shit is cool. It ain't cool. It ain't fly. We don't need no more drug addicts out here. Number one, is dangerous to your health. Number two, it's just not the move to make. We, we don't need drug addicts no more. We don't need nobody running around high no more. We got enough of that. We need thinkers. We need your mind clear. We need your game crisp. Listen, if you are a druggie, if you are huffing, puffing, or whatever on anything, you're not going to get a real career out of that unless you're a rapper. And only, and that's going to last only so long. You might OD, and you're definitely going to go broke sooner or later. 
because you're not going to be able to handle your business high. I know how the industry is. I'm, I'm, I, I keep putting the onus on them because they incentivize you to get high. Black artists, whenever you get with these corporate entities, the first thing they try to do is push drugs and drink in front of you. I'm telling you from experience, I've been at meetings with these guys at these record labels because the record labels and the television labels, they're all one and the same. So dealing with these execs, the, you go to meetings with them and you're black. I'm telling you, they, they offer you all types of new drugs, all types of new drinks. Hey, Tariq, you know, I'm representing so-and-so. We got a new vodka coming out. Man, won't you try it? I get that all. I used to get that all the time. I don't really hang out with, with those guys like that, but all the time. They're like, hey, come to this party. Hey, try this. They always got some new designer drug from somewhere, something weird that they want you to try. They would push that stuff on me all the time. So I can imagine what they do with rappers. I can imagine what they do. So they're always pushing this stuff. And they incentivize you to be high and whacked out of your mind. And that's there's only a couple of industries where you can be whacked out of your mind and make money. That's the music industry and pornography. You see? Anything else, you're not going to make no money being whacked out of your mind. You see? So I don't want us, our young people, to get caught up in that nonsense, because what you do, you use that stuff in order to gain confidence or a false sense of confidence, because what happens is the narcotic removes your inhibition, so you have no fear. It, it removes the fear. So what you have to do is learn how to build your courage up and be fearless without the narcotic. That's the key to life. That's the key to the game. Build your courage up. Get your mouthpiece crisp and don't be afraid to step out there and utilize your own confidence. You don't need that narcotic to remove the fear from you. So I'm not trying to get too preachy, but I don't, I don't want to see no more 34-year-old brothers and sisters ODing or dying, allegedly ODing. I'm not saying anything definitive. We've heard rumors, and I'm just saying, I don't know if my brother, Rich Homie Quan, OD'd, but in case he did, that would be the message I would like to send. We don't need no more narcotics being promoted like that. That that's just not the lick. Our young folks dying like that. That you, you you're not supposed to be dying at 32 and 34 years old. That ain't it. And and I got children. And I tell you guys, like I tell my kids, don't don't let your peers get you doing real weird, goofy shit just to fit in. Just leave the narcotics alone. You don't need them. You don't need them. Even weed is janky now. The weed that's out there, it ain't. Man, the weed is so chemically laced and induced with all types of stuff. The weed, damn, is worse than crack these days, man. This weed out here is so damn stepped on and infused with stuff. It ain't the same. You know, I got to really chill out on that stuff. It ain't. Let's listen. Look, the name of the game is to <clears throat> just be thorough in life. Especially men. You want to be thorough. Like women too. I mean, women too. We don't need no high women out there either. That's another thing too. We don't need no high doped up ass women. That ain't a good look, ladies. Don't know. Let me let me tell the, the ladies. Don't know balling dudes or dudes who got anything going on for real, for real. You don't, you don't want no high ass chick. That should always turn me off. I, I never got with no high chick like that. When I was out there single, that was always a turn off to me. Some go to a chick's house and the whole pillowcase is smelling like weed and um, damn a smoke detector going off. It's just no. No, no, no. Because usually, you know, we know what comes with that. A lot of weed head chicks, you're going to run out of money sooner or later. And then you still going to be needing that weed. So we know what you're going to do to get that weed. When you go to the trap, 
you're going to be in the trap for about 20, 30 minutes working out that weed deal. And we know what you're doing to work that weed out. You understand? Niggas ain't giving you the weed for free. I want y'all to understand that, fellas. Some of these women that you dating out here who got a plug for the weed, she's always getting the weed for free. It ain't really free, all right? She come back home, her throat sore. So yeah, she really worked for that 20. That 20 bag, she had to do something around two something. But yeah, that ain't the lick. We don't need no more high cats out here. We don't need no more of that. We need people out here thinking with a clear mind and a tight mouthpiece. That's what we need out here. I don't want to see no more mush mouth, drug infused Negroes out here. We got enough of them. Start getting your mouthpiece crisp and your mind clear so we can do business out here. That's what we need. Um, speaking of Georgia, you know, that the case down there with the, the white boy who shot up the school, more stuff is coming out. The media has been doing some real slick stuff. Have, have you guys noticed that they keep running stories about the shooting, but they'll put up the black victims. There's one, it was a special needs black kid who was, I think he was 14 or 15. He was one of the shooting victims, but they keep showing the, the black victim's picture, making it seem like he's the shooter. And this, the shooter's a white boy named Colt, Colt Gray, something like that, some real white boy name. And he was already being investigated by the FBI a year earlier. He got kicked off the Discord servers for extremist views. So this guy was already under the radar. The dude was already under the radar. And they've been, they've been showing his baby pictures. They finally released his mugshot. This dude looked like he about 22-3. Or 23 years old. They've been showing his damn baby pictures. He looks old in the face. So he, he killed a few people. There was a, a black kid at the school um, doing an interview with a reporter. And the black kid was like, yeah, he started shooting and I ran for cover. And he shot such and such. He shot my friend. Sounds like the dude, the white boy, was targeting the black kids. This sounds like one of those Columbine situations. It really sounds like this white boy was actually trying to target the black kids. He got one, the special needs kid, and he ended up shooting some white teachers, a Hispanic student. I think he shot a white girl. So he ended up shooting people who are white, but I think his intended targets were black. The problem was black kids know you hear gunshots just instinctively get your ass on somewhere. So the black kids knew how to really duck for cover. Like the little boy, the little black kid doing an interview, you know, he was like, yeah, well, the, the, he came in, the shots ran out, I died for cover. Yeah, so the, the black kids were getting the hell out of the way. They knew what was up. You don't have to tell the black kids twice. When there's some danger, they're going to go somewhere and out of the danger zone. It's the white kids who's all confused. Hey, what's, what's happening here? So a, a lot of them got licked. And the only kid, the only black kid who got, who probably didn't have the instincts to move and shake like that was the special needs kid. Unfortunately, that's so sad. So he targeted him. And allegedly, this is just my conjecture, but it looks like that this kid might have been a suspected white supremacist who went in there trying to target those black kids. That's what it's looking like. And the media, they've been real hush hush on this guy. I want to know what his writings are about. I want to know what websites he was on. I can almost guarantee he was probably on 4chan. See, they don't like to tie all that stuff in because they know that these kids get radicalized on these websites and these servers. They know where these guys go to spew their nonsense, but they don't never pathologize that because then you have to acknowledge these are hotbeds for extremist views, so you got to bust that stuff up. They let it go on. Again, they knew this guy this kid, and I think they arrested his dad, too, for even getting the gun for him. You see, this is the Rittenhouse effect, see? They try to lone wolf this. No, that's the Rittenhouse effect. When they sat up here coddling Kyle Rittenhouse, they sent a message to all these little suspected white supremacist teens, hey, man, if you get a gun and go shoot up people, you can be a hero like Kyle. 
See, that's how white supremacy kind of bites itself in the ass. You sit up here coddling white extremists and white supremacists, and then what happens is you create more. When you don't punish these people like Kyle Rittenhouse who do these alleged premeditated murders, you send a message to other ones like, hey, it's okay to go out here and do all this stuff. You can come up and be a hero like Kyle or, or Zimmerman. When you make heroes out of these um, disgusting suspected races, that's the message you send. You see? Real interesting dynamic. We've got a lot of people in here right now. Let's get um, Governor of the State of Jefferson. All right. Governor of the State of Jefferson. Hop on, man. And unmute your microphone, sir. How's, how's it going, my brother? Uh, I'm, hey. good. I'm good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. Hey, uh, I just wanted to hop on here. Um, I heard you say something about uh, cannabis, about smoking yeah. pot. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say I spent eight and a half years in the Marine Corps. Okay, uh, uh, from ninety five until two thousand three, I did two tours in Iraq. Okay, um, and I just wanted to say that I think the the whole thing about cannabis and smoking pot is it's it's kind of a it's a it's a plus and a minus thing it's yeah. uh you know what i mean it's um it, it's a good for you thing and it could be a bad for you thing um it's like i i have so many like like fucking pharmaceutical drugs that the va is pumping at me that i that i then I I smoke some marijuana and I'm filtering out all these VA drugs that I don't have to take because I'm either smoking or eating edibles and I'm filtering out all this VA drugs, all these pharmaceuticals. You know what I mean? Okay. It's wow. it's it. So I'm just saying, man. It's it's like my thing is, hey. It's like, uh, I remember a bumper sticker, and I'll never forget it in the 1980s. I'll never forget it. And it said, man made beer, God made pot. Who do you trust? I will okay. never forget that. There you go. And it sounds like you own some good weed now, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Let me get some more people in here. All right. I think, he got, I think it's more than weed. But go ahead, Geo Political. I um I spoke to you about two weeks ago. I just well, we, wanted uh, we talked about reparations for African Americans and foundation, wanted, foundational Black Americans. Foundational. foundational Black Americans. I wanted to bring up an idea to you. Go ahead. Um, I, I'm looking at an article from um, Council on Foreign Relations, and on this article in Council on Foreign Relations, it details the amount of uh, foreign aid we've given to all these different countries between 1946 to 2024. So we were talking about how, how, where does the funding come from to give foundational black Americans reparations? Mm -hmm. So between 1946 to 2024, for example, uh, Israel just happens to be on the top of the list. So I'll just say this first. Uh, we gave $80 billion in economic aid to Israel 230 billion dollars in military aid to Israel. The next one on the list is Egypt. We gave 78 billion dollars in economic aid to Egypt, 90 billion dollars in economic aid to Egypt or uh, military aid to Egypt, uh, 53 billion dollars in e economic aid to Afghanistan, 105 billion dollars in economic aid to Afghanistan. And then you know beyond that, there's South Vietnam, Ukraine, Iraq, South Korea, United Kingdom, e India, and Turkey. So my idea for an, just something that we could do, and maybe some of these are crucial to the um, interest of the United States, but we could take uh, at least a percentage of this foreign aid that we're sending to all of these different countries, whether it's economic, military, humanitarian, or anything else, 
we could take 20% of that, 30% of that, 40% of that, whatever, and give that to foundational black Americans instead. Um, I don't see why we should be loyal to all these foreign countries as Americans who we, we, we don't, we don't have, we do not owe these people any loyalty at all. Why don't we give that? Why don't we give that to foundational black Americans? Absolutely. And all they have to do, we can make it more simple. Just the money that's being given to these illegal immigrants, that can be our reparations. We can make it even more simple. Just stop giving all of our tax dollars and resources to these illegal immigrants, and that can go to foundational black Americans. That can be our reparations. I mean, the money is there. All that stuff about, well, we'll be bankrupt. No, no, no. The money is there. They know it. And again, we should not support the Democrats whatsoever because they're the ones fumbling the reparations bag deliberately. So we should put the Democrats on ice by all means. And again, the other day I talked about how hostile the Democrats are. The Democrats are very hostile towards us. Um, hostile to the point of almost deadliness. They're like, like we get attacked by the Democrats because it's so very important that we support the Democrats in order to keep them afloat. I'm telling you, we are the only thing that's keeping the Democrats afloat. Foundational black Americans voting as a bloc. That's the only, only, only thing that's keeping them afloat. We have to stop supporting them. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I want y'all to understand how important it is to stop supporting them. This is why it's so important for them to make us support them. Notice how they are trying to make us support them in a very abusive way. If we even question them, they send their minions to attack us. Republicans don't even do that. But we get attacked by the Democrats. The minute you ask a question, they send a whole bunch of people to try to discredit you. Anytime a prominent entertainer questions them, Jermaine Dupri, attack, attack, attack. Tyrese, he questions What's going on with the money? Attack, attack, attack. Ice Cube, hey, what's going on for black people? Attack, attack, attack. There's a smear campaign. You understand what I'm saying? Those are Cointelpro tactics. That's what Cointelpro did. If a black folk person got out of line, the, the FBI would send people and use the media to discredit them and smear and sully their names to discourage them and other people for speaking out from speaking out. So the Democrats are being extra, super duper hostile towards us because they need us to sit here and support the Democrat machine while we get nothing and elevate everybody over us. So that would make us complicit in our own ethnocide. Because if we're not going along with it, we're saying, wait a minute, we're not supporting the immigration. We're not supporting the abortion stuff. We're not supporting the, the sexual agenda. We're not supporting any of that. And then they keep doing it. They look like the enemy. See, they have to have us participate in this stuff. And when we step back and say, no, we're not participating in that, we will see what they're doing as the hostile acts they are. That's why they got to get us on board. If we ain't on board, oh, y'all must be MAGA. They're going back to the Russian bot thing. Y'all must be paid Russian bots now. All of these shaming tactics to get us on that damn democratic plantation treadmill. Get your ass off of it. We do not need to support them at all. They're not doing anything to help us, and they're being extremely detrimental to our well-being and our future. Let's get Sir Shogun. Sir Shogun in the building. All right. And we'll get triple uh, tripped. What's up, tripped? What's up? Why didn't you mention yay? Uh, What's up with okay, who's this? Wait, who's talking? Hold on. Who was talking just now? It's two people talking. Sir Shogun says something second. Okay, so okay. 
So, Sir Shogun, you said, did you mention Yay? No, the other guy did. Okay, well, let me let me talk to him and see what he meant. Now, Trip, your trip. Yeah, what's up? Why didn't you mention Yay? What about mentioning him? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't know what you just said about attacking uh, black celebrities that have money. Why didn't you mention Yay? I don't know. I just I didn't even think about it. That's why it wasn't. Oh, you didn't think about the like number one music producer in the whole entire world for a decade? Cool. That's cool. Right. It just literally didn't cross my mind until you mentioned it. But yes, he was attacked too. Attacked? Attacked? They ruined his life. <laughs> what are you talking? Yeah, he was attacked. Okay. So what's your point? My point is that you always try to obfuscate this Jewish problem that we have. That's my point. And you know you do. I, I really like you. Like, I listen are you a white, to you. Are you a white man? Are you a white man? Of course I am, dude. Then Can't you hear you my fight, voice? Why don't you fight your own problems? Why don't you, if you got a problem with Jewish people in your community, why don't you fight them? Why do y'all want Dude, black I have fight? black friends that okay, I really why, love. Why, I live in why Georgia. Are you so cowardly to, you want black people to fight your battles for you? No, we should. No, we, no, or, no, oh, no, oh, so we, so we shouldn't it, do it together? It, it, no, no, because if you have a problem. No, no. Why not? You go do something about it. Why are you whining to us? We're not going to fight your back. I'm not whining. I'm you saying why whining. shouldn't we do something together? No, but no, if you're too cowardly to do anything Cowardly? About it, I don't do give a fuck, bro. Well, you're whining to us about Jewish people. I'm not no, whining. No, then why are you telling us about a problem that you're having? Dude, it's not a problem. It's a problem we're both having. No, my I'm bringing up the supremacy. biggest. I'm bringing up I, one no, of no, the my, biggest. Our problem is white supremacy. All right. That encompasses all of the white supremacists, no matter what religious white supremacist it is or what ethnic white supremacist it is. All of the white supremacists are a problem. We don't break white supremacists up in groups. Now, if you have problems with your fellow white supremacists because of your ethnic differences, that's a you problem. You deal with that. OK. Listen. So, so then if, okay, here's the deal. What's if the deal? You can say, if you can say, if you can say that someone is black because they have a black dad uh -huh. or a black mom. Okay. Does that, do y'all do that as black people? Do you say that the person's black because they have a black dad or a black mom? Does that happen? What are you talking about? What do you mean? What am I talking about? I'm being very clear. Do you consider no, someone black because they have a black dad or a black mom? Yeah. And not and not the other and not and maybe they have a white dad or a white mom, but their dad is black and their mom is black. Or, do you see what I'm saying? You well, know your, what I'm saying. You're very, very smart. Your community I, I listen considers to you. them black. Your community considers them black. So what's the You point? do too? And your community does. Man, so listen, you know what I'm saying. I you know what I'm saying. You're trying to obfuscate. I have no idea what you're saying. It's drunk cracker babble. I don't know what you're talking about. And you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You just, you're being cowardly because Jewish people did something to you. I don't know what and don't care. That's a you problem. All right. Why don't you deal with Jewish people if they got a problem with you or you got a problem with them? You always want people to fight your battles because you're too cowardly. Right? Okay, let me get him out here. I don't want to hear hillbilly trail babble. I don't want to hear that. If you got a problem with the Jewish people or whoever, you deal with it. Don't come whining to us if you're too cowardly to fight your own battles. I don't break people up in different groups. We have an issue with white supremacy. There's white supremacists from different ethnic backgrounds. All white, all white people are not white supremacists. All Jewish white people are not white supremacists. All um, Middle Eastern white people are not white supremacists, but many of them are. And that's who I have issues with. And the ones who are white supremacists, I don't break them up in groups because they all benefit from the same system. And they all are on code against us.
See, I hey. don't let people, don't, let me, hold on one second. Let me get you in a second, brother. I don't let people drag us into that. That's a non sequitur. Don't even entertain that stuff. Because if there's two slave owners, if there's a, uh, a Christian slave owner, a white Anglo Christian, and a white Jewish slave owner, which there were, there was no point to differentiate either one. One was going to sell me to the other one. All right. And they were both going to treat us the same way. So breaking them up in groups because they have their little differences among themselves. I don't get into slave owner beefs just because slave owners and during slavery, some slave owners beef with each other. Sometimes they would have a duel and they would shoot each other. That's a them problem. That's not a me problem. See, don't let people get you into their little ethnic beefs when they're both benefiting off your subjugation. During slavery, you had slave owners who had ethnic little beefs with each other. Oh, that that other slave owner across town. Oh, he tricked me out of a deal. I bought me 20 niggas and he only gave me 12 of them. And then you want to complain to me. Hey, Negro, I bought three of your buddies and I didn't get all of them from that evil Jewish guy across the street, man. They're the problem. You know, they're a real big problem for us. And the slave is like, for us? No, that's for you. Both of y'all are selling me back and forth. So this ain't got nothing to do with me. That's what it sounds like when they're talking to us about their issues with each other based on their ethnic differences. Ain't got nothing to do with us. That's a them problem. Now, sir, hop on, sir. What up with it, what up with it Tariq? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm just chilling, bro. It's late as hell, uh, 147 up here in St. Louis. But, bro, what is, what, what, what is drunk Cracker Barrel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cracker Babble. Yeah, he was drunk he's Cracker just, Babble. Yeah, he's, he's just babbling, dude. He, they drunk. They always call up here drunk. Y'all know the white supremacists always call up drunk late at night, man. Yeah, you sure right, man. I got, but I want to talk about the tethers, man. I, I work with a tether. He's a Haitian guy from uh, uh, Florida or whatnot. Yeah. The, the, what is it? Last week we was talking, and he was talking to this Indian guy from India. So he was trying to tell the this man that he was he was asking him what tribe was he from, and I was explaining to him he's he's from India, man. Not he's not an American native or whatnot. So long story short, so I told him at the same time I said I'm what you call Native American, a, a foundational Black American. And he, this this guy gonna tell me, no, nah, no, you ain't, no, you ain't, no, you ain't no foundational black American. You from Africa? I said, no, nah, bro. <laughs> they kill me with they they kill, they really try to kill me with that when they trying to tell us what we are. That no, y'all from somewhere in Africa. Y'all can't define who and what we are. They're from Africa. If that's the case, right? And then I had to, I had to put them on you, bro. I had to uh, teach them some game. And when I said, you ever, I said, you ever heard of Tariq Nasheed? He's like, no. So I had played a video for him or whatnot. Then all of a sudden he he changed his whole attitude and, and talking crazy and everything. And I'm like, dude, look, this is what it is. This is who you are. We who we are. You from Haiti. You from a torn country. That's why you over here in America. Mm -hmm. Because your people couldn't get shit. Excuse my language. Your people couldn't get shit right. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you need to stop uh, worrying about what we doing and how we moving and go to your country and get y'all self together. And then uh, um, he, he he's one of those guys. He's very argumentative, uh, like to argue about everything or whatnot. So yeah. I, I just busted the bubble. I said, how much money? I said, how much they paying you an hour? About twenty three dollars an hour. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> and, and he and he 50 years old. Wow. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I rest my plan, I, but I okay. like the I like the Babel thing though, bro. That that was on the money. <laughs> I know that that Haitian dude was pissed, but yeah, people kill me when they try to tell us what our ethnic group is. No, no, you niggas are African. 
what will you be for? But you're African if that's the case. But we've been here longer than your family was in Haiti. We've been here longer and we can trace back longer. You're more African than me. So why are you calling yourself Haitian? You understand? They they, they can't. We, we, nobody's going to redefine us. And that's the thing. Everybody is allowed to have an ethnic group, but us, we as foundational Black Americans, we're not supposed to have a defined ethnic group. We're supposed to just be the catch-all for all things Black so people can kind of pick, choose, dip, dive in and out of our ethnicity and spread us around. That's why us circling the wagons was the greatest power move we could have made. Us saying, no, we are a rigidly defined ethnic group. We've been here for a long time. This is who we are. And this is how we define ourselves based on our lineage. And this is how we name ourselves so that nobody can play games with the name of our ethnic group. You understand? And now everybody wants to cry foul because they cannot remix our ethnic group. They can't dip and dive in it, which they do try. And we've excluded people. See, power is exclusionary. When you exclude, that's where the power is. And then they try to shame us for excluding people. You niggas are divisive. We're the, do y'all know we're the only group of people who are told we're divisive simply because we acknowledge our own damn lineage? Like we're supposed to let everybody tether on and latch on to our lineage. And I ain't having it. We're not having it. Our lineage is precious. We've done too much. We've gotten too many scores on the board over other groups. And people like to get into this stolen lineage valor with us. They try to denigrate us, but when we say, hey, no, wait a minute, these are the things we put on the board, your ethnic group, y'all didn't put nothing on the board like we did. You didn't have the accomplish accomplishments that we have. Then they try to latch on to our culture, just like with Kamala Harris. That's why I have a problem with Kamala Harris always trying to cosplay as a foundational Black American. That stolen lineage valor. We've worked too hard. We've overcome too much to have this majora spirit that has been built up in us for other groups from failed fleeing cultures to come along and try to latch on to our energy that we suffered and built. The energy that we have, ladies and gentlemen, as foundational Black Americans, where we can stand up confidently and be comfortable with who we are, because we're the only group of people who are 100% comfortable with who we are as far as our ethnicity. Do y'all understand how insecure a lot of these other ethnic groups are? They're so damn insecure. Family, they, let me be real tonight. Can we talk real tonight, family? Can we talk real tonight? Some of these other groups are so insecure about their ethnicity. They want to be something that they're not. They want to attain for whiteness. They have caste systems all through their societies. They're running around with cake soap, and it's just all over the place. They have a lot of ethnic insecurities in these other cultures. They really do. We as foundational Black Americans, we are very comfortable with who we are because we have a deeply rooted culture over here on this land that everybody tries to emulate. We're, we're good in our skin. We get around each other. We're good. We're comfortable with who we are. We ain't trying to be white. We know we'll never be white, and we're fine with that. We're cool with where we are. We're black and we're proud. We sing songs about it. You understand? You never heard songs Punjabi and proud. You've never heard songs like that. You understand? And all these other groups, when they do have some kind of 
ethnic pride, what are they doing? They're emulating us. Like if we get the Black Panthers, Hispanics, they'll do the Brown Panthers. You understand? It's a carbon copy of what we're doing. You see? Because we're comfortable in our skin as foundational Black Americans. And a lot of other groups are not. A lot of these Persian cats, they come over here, the first thing they do is get a nose job and bleached hair, trying to be more Anglo looking. A lot of Hispanics do that. They attain to be more Anglo, like the Nick Fuenteses, people like that, who have to run from their real ethnicity and try to run towards Anglicizing who they are. There's a lot of insecurity there. A lot of it. So when people see the level of confidence that we have, that's something that they wish they can get a hold of. That's why the women be choosing us so heavy. And that's why the white boys who act like us, when you see a white boy acting like a foundational black American man, those are the ones who the white women think is attractive when they act like us. When they can act like us, when they can dance like us. In the 70s, when John Travolta, he was a sex symbol because he could dance like us, kind of strut around like us, kind of have that slang. Those Italians were kind of using that FBA swag like us. So that gave them an edge. Even white boys, the Justin Timberlakes and the Justin Biebers, when they're dressing and hanging around us and using our slang, that gives them that FBA edge or cosplaying FBA edge. They have to emulate us, emulate the confidence that we inherently have. You understand? When FBA men walk in the room, there's a confidence that we have that people recognize. When FBA women walk in the room, there's a confidence that they have. Now let's get, oh, we got somebody with a foreign flag. Let's get MGB. Like MGB has something to say about this, and he got foreign flags. MGB, hop in. We're doing a lot of gesticulating there. Hop in, MGB. Hop on in here. Let's see. Oh, you didn't say nothing. You were doing a lot of emojis over there. I wanted you to say what's on your mind. All right. T Black, hop on. And then we'll get. Lionel, Lionel, T. Black. Hello? What's up, T? Yo, what's going on, brother? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm all right. All right. Can't complain, man. Um, I, I was dying to get on here to talk to you, man, face to face. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in line with your ideology. Yeah. What I have a problem with, with you mm -hmm. is how you go about doing it. Like how? Give me an example. Like, for example, you know, I've been I've been following you for about ten years, right? You, you, all right, all right. You ch you're chasing the reparations bill, and from I mean, I might be wrong, but every time somebody got reparations, it went through Congress. Correct? No. Because you got non citizens getting a form of reparations that they don't even deserve. We that's recently. I'm not talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. Like, that, I'm not. I'm not. About. No, no, no. The, I, no, other groups get money very easily. You understand? And when I got it, you. When it comes to us, we got to do all of this Congress, and then we got to go through a plebiscite. I want our money as easily as non-citizens get it, sir. That's what I'm saying. Give me an example of, of somebody, because I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Give me an example of of of. What now, you're in race New York. of people got you're in New uh, York. Uh, reparations? Who? Okay, now you were in New York. What part of New York are you from? You sound like you're from Brooklyn. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. You got right. it. Now, in New York, you got illegal immigrants running around there with EBT cards and debit cards full of money. All right? Running amok in New York right now. They're getting, mm -hmm. they're getting housing for free. 
they're getting the red damn carpet rolled out for them. Nobody had to go through a, a plebiscite, Congress, all of this stuff. They're just getting stuff. This money is just magically appearing. I want that money to magically appear for our reparations, sir. I want us to get reparations the same way those illegal immigrants are getting all of those resources in New York, Chicago, L.A., all of these other places. Out here in California, they're about to give these folks houses, dude. I want our reparations just as simple as that, right? I, yeah, I'm aware of all of that. Like, but I, I was really like referring to like in the past, like you know, like the Jews no, and 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 the Japanese and you know, et cetera, et cetera. But you you know, you absolutely right. I I have to agree with you on that. But, now, where's your but, family from? Because there's a Caribbean thing going on. They from Jamaica. Nah, hell no, hell no. You know, Pure Jamaica, black brother. man. Shit, we go all the way back to the first slaves, brother. No Jamaican, cause you sound like a nah. Jamaican. Hell no, I don't sound nowhere near close to Jamaican, man. You've been in California too long, brother. You man. was on point when you was talking Brooklyn, but yeah. <laughs> ain't no I West Indian in Brooklyn, my blood. But there's a, there's a lot of Jamaicans in Brooklyn, and they they nah, hide. <laughs> nah, you know nah, 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 my man. Nah, we but, good, but but um, but I I just wanted to say I don't know how long you're gonna allow me to talk, but it's it's a um it's a chess game. And, you know, we have to fight a harder battle than any other people on the planet. And you just can't put it on, 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 on one person. Like, like, for instance, you just a couple of days ago, you had put out a tweet about uh, when he was uh, voting on the bill for reparations in California. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, like I said, I'll follow you. I didn't hold see hold it. Now, wait, are you a Kamala supporter? No, it doesn't, that don't even matter. Don't try to deflect because I, I just want to make a point. I just want to make sure. Now, you sound like a Kamala supporter. Are you? Nah, don't don't deflect. Let's, let's not, stay I'm on topic. Let's, let's stay on the topic. Let's stay on the topic, and then we can deal with that later. Right. You know uh -oh. what I'm saying? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Go ahead. Uh -oh. Yeah. We you got know somebody saying? with a so, Biden shirt on. You got a Biden shirt on. But go ahead. Nah, don't do that, man. You good at that, but I'm not going to let you do are, that, are man. Why are you talking to me, man? Are there collard greens in your bathtub right oh now? Oh, my God, man. Uh -oh. Yo, you good at what you... You know uh -oh. where I'm going, too, man. You a very smart dude. And I, I think there's some collard greens in that, in that tub, nope. brother. <laughs> I'm going back to... I'm going back Did to... Kamala uh, Harris come by and show you them titties, brother? Nah, nah. They man. ain't got nothing to do with it. That just goes to the point to what I'm saying about your methods, about how you're going about going to do that to get the reparations you waited until the last minute like a day before to like start posting it for for everybody to show up you know to, well, to, uh, it. It was the last to put minute. pressure on them yeah you were hurt but it wasn't it was ineffective is what i'm trying to say it's like you know because stuff like that that happens if you really want effect white people have think tanks that they spent they get paid to sit in a room all day to think about how they can keep us down do you agree with that Oh yeah, they do. But yeah, those Negroes crashed out deliberately. They they were planning on crashing out and crashing out at the last minute. So yeah, they. I'm not disagreeing with you on that point. I'm not disagreeing with you. I thought they sabotaged our joint, brother. That's all that is, Sir Major. Let me get Sir Major in here. Hey, what's up, Tariq? How you feeling? I'm good, man. What's going on? Man, just left another Democratic Shield space. Man, uh -oh. and they're talking real reckless about. California, basically telling black Americans, if you don't live in California, stay out of California politics, that we don't know their system. Uh, they talked about how we need to go and deal with stuff, not through the legislature, but doing propositions. But you got to remember that the majority of California is going to be immigrants, right? Uh, yeah. The majority of uh, the, the, the demographic for black Americans is going to be uh, uh, um, a low margin. So, but doing a proposition, ain't no immigrants going to support that. So that's why it's imperative in, in, um, um, you know, that's why we're required to go through our legislators. Um, yeah, yeah. Like like you talked about, and the point that we raised, and uh, shout out to Gia, is that these immigrants ain't got to go through no propositions. These immigrants right. don't even got to lift a finger. They don't even have to ask for anything. You know what I'm saying? They're getting stuff de facto. Right. Uh, so, so there's that. And then the other point that I wanted to mention is that um, yesterday you had a, a troll, uh, an immigrant Nigerian tethered, who came up on stage by the name of North? Okay. Yeah, uh, I've got I got North's whole whole life story in my back pocket. Okay, mm. uh, coming coming soon. But what I'll tell you is this: I want folks to be reminded of this. 
that when you really are an activist, you don't have to brag about that. The people are going to see your work. The government is going to know who you are. OK, they're going to know you by name. There's yeah. nothing you can do to hide from that. OK, uh, an arrest record, a police report, an indictment, a conviction does not mean someone is guilty of a crime. OK, and this is what I was telling the Democrats in that last phase. OK, that does not mean you're guilty of a crime. What we do know that is that every day we know that black men are railroaded through the criminal justice system and they're sent to prison. They're found guilty in a court of law by this injustice system. With that said, we've also seen a plethora of cases where black men and women have had their cases overturned and fought back on appeal. OK, in the case of Kamala Harris. She railroaded a black man named Jamal True Love. Jamal True Love was out of, out of California. She sat in the courtroom, taunted this guy, smirked, did that weird laughing, and got this guy convicted. He was able to get his case overturned and sued the state for over $13 million. Mm. So when people get up on stage and they want to talk about people's shortcomings, I think it is really anti-black to get up on a stage, share people's uh, mug shots uh, and, and troll people's circumstances when you know, first of all, they can't even fight you back on an unfair one because I can't talk about the case publicly, right? right? And there's right. no doubt that mistakes were made. But this idea that someone's guilty because the white system said they were guilty is anti-black. And I'll land with that. Thank you so much. There you go. Thank you, brother. All right. Let me get Lionel, 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 Lionel. What's your name, brother? Hey, what's up, Tariq? What's up, family? What's going on, How are you? <laughs> all good, all good. Just visit, visiting the stage right now, and uh, hopefully I get a chance to, to visit the Hidden History it's Museum. Indeed. But uh, just Britain. give you props you're for everything. You're from Britain, Britain, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm studying them, but uh, I'm from, uh, I was born in Okay, oh, cool, cool, cool. So how long have you been out here in the States? Uh, just a couple of days, but hopefully I get a chance to see a lot of cool spots. And uh, What city yeah. are you in? What city are you visiting right now? Uh, that was oh, okay. yeah. You got to come out to the um, museum, man. Come out on the, um, Saturday the 14th. We got an event, man. Come on out and kick it with us. Oh, yeah, 100%. I love, I love that. So what's on your mind? Uh, just just to give you some props, and, uh, just, uh, just to say hopefully hopefully I get, I get, I get a chance to visit yeah. out there. Uh, not too, too yeah, much. We'd love to have you out, man. <laughs> Definitely come to the museum and, and kick it with us, man. We have a good time up there. And, and a lot of our non-FBA brothers and sisters, they come through all the time and support and show love. Um, we, we've had vendors, some of our non-FBA folks doing vending up there. We've had some folks up there with some jerk chicken, serving jerk chicken. So, yeah, we got everybody up. It's all love. It's all love. Let's get Idris. Idris. Hey, brother Terry. What's up? Yeah. What's up? Idris? Yeah, I'm just. Uh, I just. I just want to point it out. Uh, some point. So uh, <clears throat> it doesn't matter as a as a black person who we're gonna vote for. So um, Republican or Democrat is already agenda be, being put out there. So um, so for it, it, it's not going to help like any black person out there in America, whoever you vote for. Okay. So you say it's not going to help at all, huh? It's not going to help at all. Okay. So who are you supporting? I'm not supporting anybody. So look, look, when you go back and then look in Africa, like, uh, like all the you know the country in Africa, and uh, somebody 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 said it's like you know like uh, United States give out, um, uh, I think uh, what do you call it, um, uh, Ukraine some money, Egypt some money, and all that, and uh, we haven't seen it's like you know the state giving Africa some money. Okay. Okay, so the agenda is being put out there. So is they gonna keep you know all you know like all this black country, black those people like you know like African like black skin people live out there. So is they gonna keep them? Okay, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying, brother. I don't. I do not know what you're saying, brother. I, let's just get him out of here. And brother was kind of kind of babbling. He was kind of bushmeat babbling. 
I don't know what he was saying. Just kind of saying stuff. Let's get Eclipse. I don't want to hear Bush me back. <laughs> brother Tariq, what's up, brother? What's up, Eclipse? How are you? Oh, I'm doing good, man. You already know it, man. FBA down here in Dallas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm about to tell you, man, we want, we're going to talk about, I, I've been doing a little research on the Green Party with this uh, Jill Stein. I've yeah. been checking out her platform. She's talking about giving up them reparations or whatnot. So I say maybe people, we should try to check it out a little bit to see what she on for real and try to ask more questions to see what they on because, we, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans ain't really talking about too much. So we need to just try to keep our options open. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. And um, Cornell West, um, I like what he's talking about. So some of these independents, um, you know, we need to look into to what they're talking about. Let's get X Petty. Then we'll get watching X Petty. Double X Petty, whatever your name is. Um, uh, well, yeah, Petty Rich. X Petty Rich. You good, Rich? All right. Rich ain't saying nothing. Let me get Rich out of here. Let's get watching anonymously. No name media. What's happening? Tariq, nice to talk to you, bro. Hey, so, what's up? Did you see that? Did you see that video of Cornell West speaking? I mean, yeah, Yvette, Yvette Cornell speaking at the reparations tax force in Atlanta. Uh uh, no, what happened? So I just saw that video like five minutes ago. So Yvette Cornell was in Atlanta and they had the task force speaking of reparations and she was making a case of how reparations is lineage based and it's about descendants of slavery. It's not about being black or just having faced racism. And one of the board members was half FBA and Caribbean. And so her, the board member, 15 year old daughter got up there and started talking about how she feel that her people and her mom are being disrespected because of that Cornell said it wasn't about immigrants. These people just got here like two generations and stuff like that ago. So the board member who's half Caribbean, half FBA, just started cursing, talking about, don't talk about my daughter, she 15. Uh, just really going off, like derailed the whole thing, bro. Over, wow. I know, like it was a setup. They need to kick off that board, bro. Wow, wow, that's I gotta say, that's interesting. Yeah, see, these folks, thank you. They put these tethers on these boards to crash everything out. This is what I'm saying. That person shouldn't even be on a reparations task force. You, you see what I'm saying? They put these people with these Caribbean and African backgrounds on these task force um, boards. And then all they do is crash it out. They got they had those folks out here in California, some of these non-FBA people in the decision making process. That's why it got crashed out, to be honest. They're gonna do the dirty work for the white supremacists. So family, do not be ashamed to delineate. There's a reason why you delineate, family. When we're talking about lineage, we are not supposed to have people who are not from our lineage representing us. They will mess it up. Other groups understand that. Native American groups understand that. Family, this has been something that's been known for years, centuries. Go to the Seminole Wars. One of the most famous Seminoles was a guy named Osceola. You had people like John Horse, who was one of the black Seminoles, and you had one of the red, quote, quote, Seminoles, which was Osceola. He was one of the famous Seminole leaders. Even though he was a famous Seminole leader, Osceola was never officially a chief. He was never a chief in the Seminoles. Why was he not a chief? His lineage was incorrect. His mother was a Creek Indian, but his daddy was white. That's why they could never let him be an official chief of the Seminoles. They were dead serious about the lineage. Now, yeah, you can be, you can kind of represent to a certain degree, but yeah, uh, as an official chief, no. This is a lineage thing. 
people were serious about their lineage. Yeah, you cool. Yeah, we rock with you. You just can't be in an official leadership position where you're going to call the shots. The shot callers has to be lineage based. And that's why it's okay to say, hey, people like Kamala, I don't care about how many collard green recipes she talks about, uh, how much jive turkey, black exploitation slang she tries to use, or how much she tries to talk about HBCUs. That woman is not from our lineage. She's not going to be a good representative for foundational black Americans. We got to be very honest about people who are not from our lineage. This is no disrespect. We can be cool with you, but when it comes to some lineage-based business, people from the lineage needs to be in charge of that. We need to be calling the shots for that. We got to stand on that because people will crash out. All right, let's get Judge Sarah. Thought you were trying to get on last night, Judge Sarah. Now let's not get no craziness, Judge Sarah. You know, oh look, why you? I, you know what? When I first met you, I told you if you was my brother, we would fight every morning, didn't I? Mm, I don't remember. <laughs> but we probably, probably did. Anyway, let me put this bug in your ear, brother. So you know what? Um, I was in the other room just recently, just now, and the gentleman was saying that he felt like black people could not make it in California, in Southern California, unless they got financial repair. And and I disagree with that, um, Tariq. One, I I want to put this bug in your ear because one of the things that I'm trying to do is to create a little chocolate silly city in Los Angeles and some part of uh, of of Los Angeles. Would you agree that there's opportunity here? Oh yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, um, it is a lot of opportunity. And what I'm doing is, is I'm going to create. I'm I'm actually building a real estate. Um, investment company, but I'm going to do like a real estate investment marketing. If you remember prior to COVID, there was like turning part of LA was kind of starting to look like New York City. Would you agree? Uh, I don't remember, sis, but go ahead. You don't think so? Like downtown and stuff? Cause you've been yeah, oh yeah, downtown was, yeah, yeah. Downtown was kind of. Yeah. Know. Well, cause what, what put a halt on that was COVID. So anyway, I am going to put together a program. So do you know, cause you may not know that you don't, you know, the role, what the role is? You don't know yeah. that area, do you? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. What so I'm going to try to put together a program. Anyway, maybe you and I one day can do lunch and I can tell you about it. So um, I think big. I don't think small. And um, a lot of people don't realize. I say this. I'm from New York, but California is beautiful. And it's a lot of opportunity. And I want the family to come and be part of uh, Southern California. How you feel about that? Tariq. Yes, indeed. Have you have you been down to the Hidden History Museum yet, dear? I have not. I have not. So how you will. all that shit? And you I know you, no, no, but really, <laughs> one day, let me, I'll take you and your wife or whatever to then I'm going to tell you about what I'm doing, because one of the things that we need is we need, we need industry, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but come on down to the Hidden History Museum. I will, Tariq. Come I down appreciate you. Come down on the 14th, sis. Let's get my brother McCall in the building. Brother McCall, hop on, sir. Great. <clears throat> Excuse me, Minister of Code. How my art brother, thou? My brother. How, I'm good, brother. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Hold on. My, my maid is trying to come in. Come in. You know, we, have, we have maids out here. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Salam, brother. Listen, this delineation, you know, is not something that we did because it was just a marvelous idea. You know, it was a problem. Yeah. Once we observed we were dealing with this nomadic behavior, we had no choice but to become self-interested people. You know, we cannot align ourselves with people who are characteristically mistrustful, hostile, irritable, aggressive, impulsive, individualistic, with no respect for person, place, time, life, or property. They are a detriment, you understand? We are people of the future. We have to build and plan our strategies for the future. And we cannot do this without them. And that's the reason behind this, what we call this great 
foundational Black American re reset. This is where we're at. It's up, it's stuck, and we're moving forward. Yes, sir. Love yes, you, sir. brother. And I'll land with you. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Look, don't we? We're not going to let people shame us for recognizing and acknowledging our lineage. Always people coming around us telling us what we're not. When we say, hey, man, this is our homeland here. This is our land. We're foundational Black Americans. Uh-uh. You African. Uh-uh. What do you mean, nigga? You're African. Where? What part of African are we? You just African. Well, how come we can't go over there and get treated like Africans? Yeah? We're othered when we go to Africa. We're African in the same sense as everybody on the planet got some kind of African DNA. We've had an ethnogenesis. We've been here longer than damn near everybody on this land. We've been here for a long time. We've been had an ethnogenesis. We're a whole different ethnic group. We have a different spiritual energy, ladies and gentlemen. I call that spirit Majara. There's a spiritual energy that we have that other people do not have. And that spiritual energy was given to us to teach the world a lesson. This is why our spiritual energy is so influential. This is why we're emulated all over the world. Nobody's more emulated than foundational Black Americans, ladies and gentlemen. We are emulated by choice, not by force. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a difference between groups emulating and groups being colonized. See, a lot of other groups take on certain European ideologies because they were forced to do so. That's called colonization. That's different. People willingly emulate us because of our spiritual essence, ladies and gentlemen. They emulate us all over the world. There's an energy that we have that's very unique. I want us to really, really recognize that energy. It's a very special and powerful energy. It's a spirit that was cultivated through the hardships, trials, tribulations, perseverance, creativity, and adaptation of the nature of foundation of black Americans. We've been through something no other group has been through and we survived it. And you got to understand when you survive some type of hardship, any type of hardship, and you come out with your head up, that's always an admirable thing. That's what most movies are about. People overcoming some kind of tragedy and find triumph through that tragedy. There's always a level of respect that you have to give to that. No matter how many bumps and bruises the person got, if they're still standing at the end of the movie, you got to respect that. We got the most bumps and bruises and abuse that no other group has suffered for centuries. And we stood up, dusted ourselves off and said, we're still here. You still didn't break us. We're still not fleeing and we're still going to have the dignity that was instilled in us. You understand? People recognize that. They wish they could have that. You understand? A Kamala Harris wish she can have that. You don't give that to a Kamala damn Harris, a Hindu bedwench. You don't give that away. I don't give away the dignity of my lineage to people who didn't earn it. You don't get to come over here, Dinesh D'Souza, from your funky little Mumbai slum, disrespecting us and get the same type of respect that we've earned. 
you don't get to align yourself and say, hey, I'm just like you. I'm a person of color just like you. No, you're not. You don't get to come over here and be like, hey, nigga, I'm an American too. I'm from Africa and I'm an African-American just like you. You and I are the same. No, we're not. No disrespect, but we are different. You don't get to latch on to our lineage valor. You understand? You don't get to latch on to that. We went through too much to just give that away. And that's the thing. A lot of times people try to align with us so that we can give our valor to them and make it comparative so they can benefit from it. You understand? Remember some years ago, they were running around saying, being LGBT, that's just like being black. Remember that? They were doing that real heavy about a decade or so ago. And we had to shut that down. Like, um, no. Because, see, they were doing that in order to get certain benefits and resources by comparing themselves to us and aligning themselves with us just so they can get the benefits and resources, just like with the whole black and brown thing. See, I tell Claude Anderson told us years ago to stop with that black and brown stuff because the brown, they've never persevered like we have. They've never done what we did. They never stood up like we did. They never fought like we did. But every time we get something going, we run around, got people talking about some black and brown. So when the rewards of the perseverance starts to get divvied out, the brown gets prioritized off of something they didn't even do, something they didn't even work for. You just came over and walked into our struggle and benefited from it. Y'all stop disrespecting your goddamn ancestors doing that bullshit. See, I'm real big on respecting the ancestors. I'm so big on that family. That's where our spirit comes from, man. I, some of our spirit comes from the most high, and it also comes from the ancestral energy, the ancestral spirit, man. That shit is real. Ancestral energy is very real. You understand what I'm saying? This is why, let, let, let me get deep for a minute. Can we get deep? Am I getting too deep? Give me a thumbs. I don't want to get too deep tonight because I know we like to, to you know, talk trash and BS around. Do y'all want to hear some bullshit or some real shit? What, what y'all want to hear tonight? Because I might have to get a little deep because we're going to have to respect that ancestral energy. We're going to have to respect it, man. It's real. Our ancestors, man, they're with us. They're here. That energy, energy doesn't, die. Energy is just transferred. Their, their energy is still here. And that energy is pure. And the energy is reciprocal. That energy wants vengeance to a certain degree. It wants justice. That energy wants justice. That's why Lake Lanier is always getting some damn justice on somebody. Every damn week, somebody get pulled down at Lake Lanier because that ancestral energy is in there. Spirits and water go together, man. Water holds spirits, majorly. And another dude got caught up at Lake Lanier a couple of days ago. That that water ain't playing. That ancestry, the ancestral energy is real. Remember in Montgomery, right before Fade and the water popped off, some sisters went over there and, and poured libations in the water over there because that was a slave port. So some sisters came and paid homage and did a root work ceremony two hours before the fade in the water thing. And when the, the white boys start jumping on the brother, brothers start popping up out that water. That was that ancestral energy kicking in. We better understand it and recognize it. Ancestral energy is real. We got to respect it. When you disrespect it, 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 it's about reciprocity. It's about revenge. That's why you see a lot of these rappers dying who go around disrespecting people's graves, Fulio and all of those dudes. It was another dude. It was, um, I want to say he was in Philly somewhere. Where was this guy? Just got killed um, a few weeks ago. I can't think of his name. In Philly, PMB folk. What's his name, brother? PMB folk. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was out there in somebody's graveyard disrespecting them, digging up the grave of his ops. Then he ended up getting killed. You understand Fulio and all those dudes out there playing in graveyards, disrespecting the dead. You better understand something. When a your op, when that op dies, the ancestral energy goes back to the spiritual essence of who that person really was. See, what was imposed on you, that's not who you really are. What's imposed on you, you being in the hood, you being in gang fights, that's something that was imposed on you. That's not your spiritual essence. That's why you grow out of it at a certain age. You shake the bullshit off of you at a certain age and you get to where you need to be spiritually once you get older. Just like Malcolm X. Malcolm X was in the streets. Once he got a little bit older, he shook the bullshit off of him because that was imposed on him. Then he tapped in to his real spiritual essence. A lot of us do that. Once you get to a certain age, once you reach a certain epiphany, you start tapping into who you are supposed to be spiritually. So a lot of the stuff that you would do when you were younger, you realize, okay, I was doing that because of outside influences. You understand? So you'll take some of those outside influences, you'll take some of those mistakes and say, hey, let me use this to strengthen up who I'm supposed to really be what my real spirit is supposed to be. See, that's the great thing about Foundation of Black Americans. We have a dichotomy within our system. See, a lot of people like to point out the ratchetness and the the depravity that we see in the media, the sexy reds and all of that filth that we see. But underneath that, there's a spiritual essence that's there. We just got to tap into it. You understand? That's why I, I do criticize the sexy reds, but underneath that, I know there's there's some real shit in there. There's a real awakening there that just has not been tapped into. She's people like that, they've been incentivized to promote the ratchetness. They've been incentivized to do that. You understand? And eventually people shake that off. Like Maya Angelo. You know, Maya Angelo. Wasn't she working in a hoe house at one point? My Angelo was 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 doing something strange for a little piece of change. You, you dig? A lot of those women like my Angelo and all of those, they, you know, they would be in brothels and all that stuff, but after a while, they tap back into their spiritual essence of who they really were, and they became iconic. They became people who were extremely respected within the community. They tapped into their real spiritual journey and being. You understand? And that's what our spirit is about as foundational Black Americans. We've had so much garbage imposed on us and we still find ways to maintain our dignity. Like my, my grandmother, my grandmother, the sweetest person in the world, you always hear me brag about my grandmother, just a spiritual angel. Now, before I was born, and my mother would tell me stories, my grandmother and grandfather, unfortunately, they, they were bootleggers. They had to bootleg whiskey. They had to sell illegal whiskey in order to make ends meet. Some of you guys, if you got great grandparents or grandparents in the South, y'all know what I'm talking about. Your granny and them used to make that damn whiskey too. Raise your hand if y'all had some bootleggers in your family. If you're from Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina or Georgia, there's a damn bootlegger in your family. If you come from that lineage, somebody was making some damn whiskey. All right. That was the hustle. That's how they used to trap back in the day. All right. That's how they used to get out. Granny and them used to be out there slinging that whiskey. They had a, they'd be out there in the woods they had some little bootleg distillery out there in the in the woods. You, you understand? It was illegal. They were breaking the law. They did what they had to do, but they were still some of the greatest people on earth. They still had this spiritual essence. They just they had to do what they had to do to make ends meet. You understand? So just because we see certain ratchet type behavior. That's not the essence of who the people are. 
after a while, they learn how to shake that stuff off and then tap back into their Majora spirit and tap into the journey that they're supposed to take. That's the great thing about us. That's why we have so many iconic foundational Black Americans, because we use some of the things that's imposed on us to survive that, to tap back into who we're supposed to be. You understand? That's the great thing about us. That's why so many hustlers, street cats, even though they're in the streets, they still know how to look out for the community. My good friend, Freeway Rick, one of the biggest drug dealers in the the country at one point, he actually started a lot of legitimate businesses for people. Spiritually, phenomenal brother. He was doing what he had to do. But spiritually, phenomenal brother, good spirit. He launched the careers of a lot of people. I think he invested in Anita Baker's early career. You understand? So uh, there was a lot of us in foundational Black American society who had to do what they had to do based on the circumstances externally imposed on us. And if we survive long enough, we learn how to shape our essence back into where it's supposed to be, which is spiritual dignity. Hope I didn't get too deep. I just want us to understand how important our lineage is and who we are as a people. That's why we don't let people criticize us. I don't let no people criticize us because what happens is you got these people who from come from completely failed states who come over here and then they find somebody within our society who has circumstances imposed on them and then try to point the finger talking about, well, look at the black culture. You don't get to do that. You don't get to play that game because, yeah, that black kid on the corner, the black girl on the corner or whatever, after a while, they're going to wake up and they're going to shake off what they need to shake off and tap back into their spiritual essence and they're going to be good. Your ass is the one who had to flee because y'all never tap back into anything. Y'all over there just depravity on depravity to the point where you got to bounce. So you're not going to be able to come over here and point no fingers at us about nothing. That's why I'm hell on tethers who think they're going to flee over here and say anything negative about us. Like the Myron Gaines and all of these people, you don't get to come over here and say nothing while you're over here because of us. It was us who helped get you here. So you don't come over here with any form of disrespect. Let's get some other people in here. You good, Smooth? What's up, Smooth? Hey, what's going on, Flex? This Smoothie's Ultimate Adventures available on Amazon. Uh, yeah, man, I heard you was talking earlier about uh, about the shooting in Georgia. Uh, yeah. They just announced that uh, they, that they placed some charges on the father for yeah. uh, giving him that, that, that gun or whatever for Christmas. And I wanted your thoughts on that. Like, should we be embracing that? Like, or is that going to be bad? You know, that eventually is going to leak off into the black community. Should we be against that, opposed to that, or or with it? No, I'm I'm with that because here yeah, his dad see these parents go out here and do that little cow written house thing, where they get these kids all these damn guns and yeah, since they they already lock us up anyway. They already do that with us. Like it was a black kid who took a gun to school, I think in North Carolina a couple of years ago, and um, shot his teacher. Then they arrested the mom. So they're already doing that to us. So they're already doing it. So, yeah, them doing it to these white parents when these kids go up here after the white parents and bought these kids some AKs. Yeah, holler at them like y'all hollering at us. Do the same thing. All right. How many of you? Let's get what bro doing. Let's get what bro doing. All right. How many people we got in here? We got a lot of people in here. Don't forget, man, get your tickets to join me at the Hidden History Museum, at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. We got an event Saturday, September 14th. That's in, that's next week. So y'all join me and get your tickets now. I'd like to see y'all in the place. We're going to have a great time. What's up, what? What's up, Tyreek? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Nothing much, man. Uh, I'm out here in the Bay Area, and... There was some foundational sisters that was just attacked, uh, like with hate crimes and stuff. Um, oh, what so my, uh, I don't know the full story. Uh, I just seen it on the news myself. But uh, from what what they said is that a lady got attacked at her store, 
and um the guy was calling her all types of niggers and stuff like that as he was beating her and um so they're labeling the hate crime and then the there was a rec center that got attacked too and people sprayed graffiti all on it so i'm just saying we need you know uh, i'm trying to spread awareness about it so that way they can you know have some uh help with this because i think this is uh something that we should be getting behind Yes, indeed. Now, what was the rec center out there? What was the name of the rec center? What kind of rec center? Uh, I'm not for sure. I can uh, post it or, you know, the link or whatever. But, uh, yeah, if you put it in the Jumbotron, that'd be great. Okay. We'll do. Do, you know what, do you know what they spray painted on the rec center? The N-word and some other oh. stuff, too. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me know what's up. I'm, I'm going to look into that. I got to make sure that the people in the town are good, man. Yeah, because I'm out here, you know, I, I've been living out here my whole life, you know. Man, it's getting bad out here with anti-black hate. You know, it's just crazy. So, man, thank you so much. I keep telling y'all, man, look, black institutions out here in California, man, we get targeted, dude. And man, the Hidden History Museum, we done been targeted and hit so many times, dude. We get vandalized. They would vandalize us all the time, man. All the time. And we don't get no hate crime bills. They don't even treat them like hate crimes. We're, we're, we're telling people, hey, look, man, we're getting targeted based on race. We're telling them we're getting targeted based on race. And they're, they're playing dumb. Well, no, well, people, is, you know, there's, there's a lot of vandals out here. It might be gang related. You know, they don't treat it like a hate crime. And again, when we were, we had the police at the Hidden History Museum after we'd have been vandalized a few times, they sent a, a Negro investigator down there to just be the, to, to pull an Obama and explain. I told y'all that before we had a black, they sent the LAPD sent a black investigator down there. And I'm, I'm telling them, I'm like, dude, we, we getting hit with hate crimes. And he's like, Oh no, well, you know, there's a lot of gang activities. You know how the gangs are, you know, I said, bruh, I said, man, now they were spray painting the Chinese museum down the street. You guys would be out here screaming hate crime. Y'all would have the FBI out here with hate crime. And boy, when I said that, this Negro's eyes started bucking so hard. Ho, 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 hold on now. Now, she, we can't be saying all that now. Hold on now. I can't confirm or deny none of that now. Nah. Wait, 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 wait. They, I, I, I see they we ain't gonna go there now. Nah. We ain't gonna go there. I'm like, whoa, nigga, what the hell? Man? I'm looking at he was boy, he his he, this dude temperature got real hot. He started bucking his eyes. I said, okay, they didn't sent down the Negro Whisperer. They didn't send me the Negro Whisperer. Man. What's up? What's Stepper in here? Oh, Stepper, what's going on? What's going on, Mr. Stepper? Yo, uh, did anybody hear anything back from uh, these reparations people now that they went to that meeting, the council members? Um, which meeting? I don't know. Where there's so many meetings going on. I don't know which one is which. Which one? There was one that happened, I think it was today or yesterday. Uh, there's the one some in video. LA? Yeah. To do okay, Isaac? I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened with it. So, all right. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. There's been so many meetings and there's been so many planned meetings. So I don't know. I do not know. Um, people have been hit me up with different flyers. There's just a lot going on. Um, then there's the reparations thing down in Georgia that I didn't know about. There's so many of them going on. Let's get a black vanguard. Let me get Black Vanguard in the building. Black Vanguard, what's going on? Hey, what's up, Tommy Nashi? I'm good, man. How are you? Yeah, I was there at the town hall today. And the one in Atlanta? No, the one in L.A., though, where Isaac Bryan showed up. Oh, because now what happened? Well, Isaac Bryan started explaining the Bible and talking about why he voted against the California bill that gives California reparations, and a murder almost... Put hands on Ice Brown. We have to stop the brother from putting hands on him, though. I'm about wow. to post a video on the Jumbotron, though, but it went good, though. People confronted Isaac Brown. People gave him that work, though. But um, I'm about to post a video on Jumbotron. It's in my profile, though, if you want to look okay. at it. I also did a, oh, yeah. a Twitter live stream as well. 
Oh yeah, I want to see that definitely, definitely. Yeah, post that up. Post it up, brother. Yeah, I'm gonna post up the second. Give me one second. Thank you. All right, let's get uh, Miss T. Let's get Miss T in the building. Miss T in the building. Hey, Miss T, how are you, beloved? I'm a bit. I'm a bit tired. I was at the Fulton County Reparations Task Force meeting tonight. Now, what happened? It got ghetto uh -oh. by a Caribbean. Wow. Um, it was public comment time. Um, it was, we had 22 people to speak. It was a well-attended meeting. Um, most of us were for lineage. Um, okay. to, I'm sorry? Go ahead, dear. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, most of us were for lineage-based reparations, and we gave our reasons for it. <clears throat> One of the members on the task force, her name is Ann Hill hyphen Bond. Juicy Genius has done a video where it's recorded how she behaved tonight. Mm. She used expletives, told us to F ourselves. Uh, some say that she called us the N word. Um, she got upset. Her daughter made a public comment. Her daughter was 15. And she went off because she thought she heard somebody go off or say something to her daughter. Um, and uh, when they went to adjourn the meeting tonight, which was very peaceful, very peaceful, she said, we're not adjourning nothing until I say what I got to say. Oh, Lord. And so there is a video. I'm going to share it in your Jumbotron. Um, and it captures how ugly she behaved. She told us that she was, she got three flags in her bio. They said um, a Caribbean flag, a Guy Guyana flag or something, and an American flag. Um, now, she did state she was Caribbean, and I thought I heard she say she was Black American. But she also said, Tariq, she don't live in Fulton County. Mm. And she's sitting there representing District 4 as a non-Fulton County person. Wow. So we are going to um, begin a campaign to have her removed because she disrespected Black Americans by telling us to F ourselves and calling us the N-word. And she does not live in the county, I'm sorry, in the district that she's there representing. Again, her name is Ann Hill Bond. I'm going to share with you the video. You will see how disgustingly she behaved. And sometimes these people act that way and we get labeled yeah. being angry black women. She acted a complete and total fool. Security had to come in and ask her to leave. Wow. 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 I got to see that. I got to see that. So yes, definitely share that in the Jumbotron. And thank you so much, sis. And family, we, family, the, these folks are put out here to crash out everything. That's why delineation, when it comes to this, is very important because these non-FBA people will come and deliberately crash it out. They don't want us to get reparations. Let, let's be real. The, 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 the tether class don't want us to get them. And they will infiltrate our circles and do everything they can to undermine it. That's why I stay on these tethers necks and I don't let up unashamed. You're not going to shame me talking about divisiveness. You damn sure right. I want to divide from people who are trying to undermine us. I want to divide the hell out of you. I don't want you around us if you're trying to undermine us. You got people who are going out of their way to undermine us. The fact that we are going to get something and they can't tether on to it, they're going scorched earth. 
You understand? They're bringing the same mentality they brought from their homeland that failed, that got everything devastated over there. They're bringing that same energy and mindset over here. If they can't eat off of it, if they can't capitalize and exploit us, they'll burn it down. You understand? We can't let that happen. And when some of you dumb Negroes sit up here talking about Kamala Harris, she one of us. You are the problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we got a tether in here giving the thumbs down. Alchemist, hop in. Speaking of tether, hop in, Alchemist. All right, Dr. Ignacio, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good, and I'm FBA, and I'm happy. What's up? What's on your mind? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm trying to ask you something here. Like, you said, like there was some African American here before, like white people came here. Yes, many That's... black people here, many of them, and I've explained this to you before. That's a damn and... lie, though. You you made well, that. I'm a tether, and I say so doesn't work, sir. No, you you lie about that. There is no African American here before, like there were people. black people in the Americas, proven by several sources. Which which sources? Which one? Um, Van Sertema, Leo Werner, Von Wootenau, um, Constantine Rafinesque. These he are was, the scholars have all proved that there were black people. He was he was Native American here. There he was an African American black. here. They were black. You no, know, you keep saying African American. I keep saying black. No, I I, I there was. Every, you keep saying African American. I'm saying black. Yeah, from Africa, bro. Yeah, no, we are from here. Yeah, descendant from Africa. We you are know that. Here. You know that, Tariq Nasheed. You know we that. are from here. You know we're from here, right? No, you are from Africa. Do everybody's from Africa on the planet? So why then you say that you're from here? Everybody's on that. Everybody from the planet is from Africa, right? So why? The, so why you say then you're from here then? When you say everybody because, from Africa, because we've had an ethnogenesis like everybody else, right? So you're from Africa then, right? Everybody has come from Africa at one point. Uh, that's a redundant. Of, that's a redundant statement. And also, you said that no, no, was, no, down. no. So, look, so little, slow the little tether lips down. Yeah, in the same, in, everybody right in the same came subject. from Africa at one point, but that's a redundant statement. Everybody has had an ethnogenesis. You told me so last have time. We. You we told me last time. You said there was black people here, right? And then you said there is some black people that brought here, right? We've had an ethnogenesis, sir. Did Why you, can't we accept that? Did you not understand my question? I no, said, no, 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 I don't know because you're tethered, Bambly. No, you said there was black we people here no before. Difference. There was black we're people not, here we're, before, we're not, right? We're not continental Africans, sir. Oh my God. So what about... We are not continental <gasps> Africans. What about the black people that was brought here then? Yeah, yeah. They're not continental Africans no more. So how can you, how can you know they that... They have an ethnogenesis no. too. Oh, man. They How? had an ethnogenesis. They've been here so long. The countries in Africa don't even exist no more that were around oh them, God. sir. There was an ethnogenesis. You can't just say we're from Africa. Those countries don't even exist no more. So what is what is the difference from, between some part, black people that was here and the African that was brought here? What is the, the difference? The spiritual, the physiology. They fucking the, lie. Yeah. It's a we damn lie, bro. Dude, you don't we know don't how... have your forehead. We don't you... have forehead like oh. you, sir. We can. We know you look different. You oh don't my... look and act like us. I'm talking about African that was brought here the as African a slave. I'm talking about you. No. You are, and we are different you're from deflecting. You're deflecting. You're I'm deflecting. not deflecting, you're sir. Deflecting, you're bro. You know us. what I'm saying. Your forehead is different. Your feet are different. We're You're not talking about me. Thing. I'm not talking about me. That's what I'm talking about, sir. We look different. We carry ourselves different. Our hairlines are different, sir. There's a difference there, sir. Tariq, I'm not talking about me. What are you talking about? We look different. 
We're not I'm, the same. I'm, I'm talking about the African that was brought here as a slave. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just talking about in general. We're different. I know that we're different. This, this African right now, we're different. But I'll be talking about the African that was here before as a slave. Dude, they're different. No, they're not different. How can you make yeah, a they, difference between you and them? Yes, yeah. there's a just like Fijians, people from Fiji, they came from Africa at one point, but they're totally different from Africans now. They're different. So you're saying there is African that was brought here We're when different. Was here. We've had an ethnogenesis, sir. Bro, that's not scientists. That's, scientists that's, prove that. You and I are different. We I'm not a, talking about me again. That's what oh I'm, my that's god. What I'm man. talking about because you keep trying to tether yourself No, on no, up. no. I'm not talking about yes, me. Yes, nigga. You keep trying to tether yourself onto us, and we are different, sir. Just because you're whining about it and trying to Africanize us, that's not going to make it true. We're not from Africa. We're not continental Africans. We're from Africa the same way everybody on the planet is from Africa. If you trace everybody on the planet's DNA, they somebody came from Africa at some point. Even the Asians. I've been to Asia. There are tribes that look like tribes from South Africa and Asia. Don't matter. We've had an ethnogenesis, though, sir. Just deal with it. I don't want to hear your tether about me. All right. I don't want to hear that. I do not want to hear musty tether babble. These folks be trying to tether us on to them. So they can leech off of our accomplishments. We're different, sir. It's and that's okay. It is okay. But anyway, let me get out of here, guys. I've been in here too long. It's eleven hundred people in the middle of the night. Listen, family, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. I need y'all to do three things. Number one, when you go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com, get tickets to join me here at the Hidden History Museum Saturday. September 14th, we got 